Hello, welcome to Kimcast Art. Today we're going to be talking about how do I price my paintings. Well, first off, it's really up to you, and this is a thought process that you have to figure out a lot of it on your own. But basically, some people will price their paintings, for instance, by the square inch. So you multiply one side by the other, which is 11 by 14, 11 times 14, and then multiply it times whatever price per square inch that you want to charge. Now, if you're a beginner, maybe uh, 25 cents a square inch or 35 cents a square inch or something like that. When you move up a little bit, maybe go to 50 cents a square inch and eventually to a dollar, two dollars a square inch. I mean, and so on. You know, when they start selling, you'll know. We don't want to make them too cheap, that's for sure, because you have to figure out what you have in that painting too. You don't want to do a break-even point either. In 11 by 14, with a frame, you know, and you have to add that frame in separately. Now, when you do your price point, I would advise doing it without the frame. Add the frame on later. Because you don't know what you're going to pay for the frame. You may decide you want a, a simple frame, or you may want something a lot more complex, a lot fancier, and it's going to be more costly. So you add that on later on. Some paintings you don't have to frame. Like uh, the knife painting right here of uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. I paint the edges around that particular painting so I don't have to worry about a frame. Now it would look beautiful with a frame, but I don't have to have a frame on it. And that's that style of painting. Knife paintings, a lot of times they don't even bother with a frame. And some people paint all the time normal paintings and the main thing there is make sure you paint the outer edge of the frame uh, pick a color that's within the frame uh, within the picture uh, predominantly predominant color pick that one and do the edge of it some people prefer just painting the outside black or dark color try it and see what you like the best now if you're going by the square inch that's fine that's one way to look at it but one thing you need to remember though, when you start off pricing your paintings, try to find one that you're comfortable with and that you're happy with. Because it's really hard to go up. Your paintings will, when you improve, that's not a problem. People will see your paintings wherever they are in a gallery or at home or online or wherever. As you get better, then of course you can bring your price point up. It's hard to go up immediately because people really need to see what you're doing. They need to follow you and they'll start seeing that they're worth more money. So as you progress with your painting, raise your price. Try not to go down. You know, unless you're doing like a discount coupon or something like that, you really don't want to go down. I I have always found, and I've been painting for close to 40 years, my paintings normally have pretty close to the same price. If I do an 11 by 14, the minimum price is probably going to be $100. That's the very minimum. And that's for like landscape. If it's a portrait, it's way more. A lot more detail in a portrait, and that's why they're way more time consuming. So. A 16 by 20, we're automatically going to be up to around 150 to 200 dollars. Mostly 200 dollars now, but 18 by 24, we're going up even more, 250 or more. Um, sometimes I'll do even bigger paintings if I do like a 24 by 36, which is getting pretty rare now because a lot of people don't have the room to put a huge painting like that. And now, uh, like. Those are great for like doctor's offices, business buildings, and stuff like that. They want them real big paintings up there. Then you can start getting into some pretty serious money. But you can be looking at a lot more work doing that painting too. So those are things you have to think about too. And then you've got to buy the frame more than likely. You'll be buying a frame for it. Now, I found sometimes it's a good thing to do is to talk to the customer. If you have a commission where they're paying you to do a painting, 
find out from them if they're buying their own frame. A lot of times people would say, well, I want my picture frame to match my decor of my house. So they'll say, no, I don't want you to buy the frame. I'll buy the frame. And that's great. It's better for you, really. But sometimes they may say, okay, I'll buy the frame, but I want you to frame the painting. So you'll have to compensate for a little bit of that too because it does take some time to properly frame a picture. You also have to buy some things to do that. If you are in a gallery setting, most galleries now, if you're looking at 11 by 14 or larger, especially, you have to put a wire on the back. And that means you're going to have to have some screw, screw eyes. You have to have the cable. Sometimes if they're really big, you'll have like a like a, a screw eye with two screws on a plate that you literally screw onto the picture. So they will require you to have that. And um, you can't use the claw, what they call the claw, that little jagged little thing. You get them, like if you go to Walmart or Target or anywhere and you buy a picture, they're going to have that claw on them. Most of them will. If you have a, a 8 by 10 or smaller, a lot of times that's acceptable. But if, when you get to the point where you're going to galleries and you're showing your paintings in galleries, you need to ask the gallery what they require. Most of them will tell you right up front because you'll have to sign up, put your name, address, and all that stuff, and what your paintings are. And, and a lot of times they'll have a, a thing of requirements there on what they require you to do um, and also what their fees are. You need to get all that up front. But so that's really what you need to do in a nutshell as far as all that goes. Um, if you have any questions that I didn't cover here on, on this topic, definitely leave comments, ask questions, and I'll get back to you. I can pretty much assure you I'll get back to you. So anyway, have a good day, and uh, we'll see you the next time.